Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video contains things that I tinker with throughout the day. For step-by-step -step detailed instructions of those tasks, you can click on the link in the comment section below. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. This video also has tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. So, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to reset the service light in Queen B here. And, uh... One thing I've been having a little bit of issues with uh, Tuned Panther. To my surprise, I'm having some knock uh, at high RPMs during my tune. Put a bigger turbo on, some other physical upgrades. Whenever you do that, you need to get your ECU tuned or what they call remap. In doing so, we're trying to tweak it. I'm getting a custom uh, tune through VAST. And I was having some issues with knock around 4,500 RPM. Uh, the people at VAS, Aaron, suggested that it's probably uh, either my engine is getting old, rattling, or I'm having a lot of carbon buildup in my cylinder area. Well, he's um, right. It, you know, uh, when I did the cylinder hit on that car a year and a half ago, I do remember there being some carbon buildup on there. I looked at it as being normal. I didn't clean it off, which was a mistake. So if you pull the cylinder head off and you see carbon buildup in the cylinder area, clean that stuff off. It could affect the spray pattern of the fuel. Uh, these cars, these 850s, has what's called batch injection, which means it fires all five fuel injectors at a time and then through the cycle of the firing order, it build, it burns off that fuel in the combustion cycle. Uh, if you have carbon buildup, that's not a smooth metal hard surface. And if you look at it under a microscope, I, I would assume the carbon buildup looks like a rough, rocky surface. And that is, uh, I believe, uh, interrupting the smooth firing of the cylinder at high RPM. No big deal, low RPMs, cruising down the highway, normal city driving, but when you got your foot in it and you're going around watt and you get up near high RPMs, that uh, rough microscopic surface is interrupting the uh, firing of the cylinder. I did a couple things to try to reduce that. One thing I did was a steam clean bath. Uh, occasionally when you pull a head off of a car that had coolant leaking into the cylinder man that cylinder has been steam clean looks like brand new tried that that really didn't do any good I then sea foamed it the only reason I sea foamed it is because I know the valve stem seals have been replaced a year and a half ago they're not that old sea foam's not going to tip them over the edge that did help it I think it smoothed some of that rough surface out in that uh uh, carbon buildup. Now I'm not knocking uh, occasionally at close to the red line. Uh, still not clean though. Put a camera down there. Still got carbon. The thing that's kind of disappointing is I've always thought that I've done things to try to avoid that. I've always taken pride in using top tier gas. It's supposed to have detergents in there that clean the fuel injectors, lubricate the fuel components, and prevent carbon buildup in the combustion chamber. I've always used Lucas fuel injector cleaner, which is supposed to prevent that as well. I don't use it as often as they claim you should. Nonetheless, every 2,500 miles, which is a couple times a month for me in the heavy driving season, that didn't help it. Still had a lot of buildup when I pulled that cylinder head off. So. Stuck the camera down there, verified it's still there. Uh, there's two things that may have contributed to there being that build up in there. I haven't checked Queen B yet, but I know it is on Panther. The thing that kind of bothers me, almost ticks me off, is I've pulled cylinder heads off of other vehicles. People using low octane, people using cheap gas. Man, and their cylinders, uh, piston tops are either clean or relatively clean. The donor car, I went back looked at that vehicle, spotless piston tops. 
I looked at a couple other vehicles, cylinder tops, just about spotless, no carbon buildup. I even looked at uh, James's over there in Florence. He had very little carbon buildup. He he was running low octane and uh, uh, you know cheap gas. So that kind of bothered me that they don't have the carbon buildup that I have. I can't believe it. <laughs> if I'm doing the right thing, there's two reasons why I probably have carbon buildup. Number one, I bought the car with 180. 8,000 miles on it, there's a chance that the previous owner had that build up and I just never knew it, never checked. Uh, pull the uh, PCV apart, it was 80% plug. So there may have been build up in it when I bought it. Number two, when I got it, the valves themselves were already leaking. Those things leaked until I pulled that head off nearly 200,000 miles later. So between 188 and 363, it could have been uh, the oil leaking past the valve stem seals could have been contributing to that carbon buildup. I don't know for sure, but still yet, using uh, top tier fuel, little bit of fuel injector cleaner here and there, I thought that would have cleaned that off. So anyway, my next step, I'm using combustion chamber cleaner by Lucas. I'm going to see if that helps. Uh, if that doesn't help, I'm probably going to put some meth injection down there, drive up and down the highway, see if that helps, and just kind of, you know, go from there on what I'm going to do. Uh, worst case scenario, I might pull the head off of it just to clean those piston tops. So, that's where I'm at on that. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Here with Queen B, since I changed the oil about a thousand miles ago, I haven't reset the uh, oil change reminder. So I'm going to do that now, port number 7, turn the ignition on, 4151, we'll reset it. Right, here we go, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, oh, come on. Two, three, four, five. One. Should get a lot of flickers. There it goes. Service lights been reset. Go cut the key off, restow that wire. I have a slow drain in my sink. I think it's because of hair or similar obstructions in the drain. So I got one of these zipper things. I believe they're one time use. I'm gonna jam it down in there, pull it out, see how it works. As you can see, the water is kind of standing, draining a little slow. We've run hot water down there, so we don't think it's great. All right, so we got a little speck of dirt there. Let's see how long this takes to drain. Let's count the seconds. We're at 10 seconds so far. Real time drain. Whenever we see the top of the thing surface, we'll call that drained. All right, that's it, 34 seconds. I'm gonna take that out. Push this down there as far as it'll go. It should make the curve. And uh, sink in the, uh, get it down there as far as you can. That's it. Now you pull it up. It should pull up anything that's in there. What are you doing with that? Uh, didn't pull up much. Let's see if it drains better. Didn't seem to grab much. Just right there. So we got this thing over there. Dot again. Let's see how long it takes to drain down this time. Last time it was 37 seconds. I don't think it's going to be much better because I didn't get much on the zipper. We're at 24. Let's see. 
Yep, right about the same. 34 seconds. Let me try it again. Our dream, this doesn't seem to be working. Got a little bit out, but that may not be the problem. I'm going to try some dream out. That zipper should have cured the P-trap. I think our problem is different. So I'm going to try this stuff here. Read the instructions. Do what it says. See how that helps us. It says 70% more actives to destroy hair club. Instruction says dump the contents in there, wait 15 minutes, flush with hot water. So after 10 minutes, I'm going to put some water on the stove. It's going to be boiling hot water I'm going to flush with. So let's see how it works. So that stuff doesn't seem to be moving far. Anyway, I got some hot water in this kettle. Heated it up a little bit more in the kettle. I'm going to pour it down the drain and see if this drain is going to be totally clear. It seems to be moving pretty fast. Wow. I'm going to clog it up, fill it up halfway, and see how long it takes to drain down. Alright, let's get this thing filled halfway up. Flip this thing over and see how fast it drains down. I think I'm actually higher than I was before. But I need to have time to flip this thing over. Water is warm, not really hot. So, alright, let me flip this thing over and see how quick it drains. Alright. Man, like six seconds. I'd say we're clear. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.